Hey, how's it going everyone? How you guys doing tonight, today, wherever you're from in this beautiful world? It is Recipe Wednesday. Whoa, let me turn that down. I always forget. Um, Let me see, let me see. Bumpy Road Brewery and Thrash Metal, what's up guys? Thanks for being here, sorry I'm a little late. Uh, yeah, you know how it is. Extra special beer, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm killing flies again. Oh, man, the damn flies. Before, for the night, let's see number five. Where the fuck are they coming from? <laughs> Extra special bumpy. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's uh, ESB. It's uh, Extra Special Bitter. It's an English pale ale. Uh, some of, as you two both know, um, most hated grower, what's going on? Ah, Steeler Nation, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much, man. Right on. Um, yeah, most hated grower, elbow cough, elbow cough. That's right. Boo, man. What's up, boo, man? What's up, man? <laughs> Evening, beer, man. Hope you're good. Doing great, man. Doing great. Hope you guys are here, uh, are ready to, uh, uh, do a recipe with me. I, an ESB. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, Miss Piggy. How you doing? All right. Well, I'm just drinking a, I'm drinking a Booty Zaffa IPA from uh, Georgetown uh, Brewing Company. Uh, where are they from? I forgot. All right. So I've got, I added a few more little things to kind of jive it up, jive, jive it up a little bit. Jive it up. Jive it up a little bit, but um, as always, let's go ahead and start with some history of the strong bitter. Um, the uh, I guess that's what they would uh, call it. Um, it's an English pale ale. It's a it's a strong bitter. It's a it's an extra special bitter. Strong bitters can be seen as a higher gravity version of best bitters, although not necessarily more premium. This is from BJCP. Um, I'm going to drink an old speckled hand while you build this. Nice. All right, man. Um, <laughs> not necessarily more premium since best bitters are traditionally the bitter's finest product. Since beer is sold by strength in the UK, these beers often have some alcohol flavor, perhaps to let the consumer know they are getting their due. In England today, ESB is a brand unique to Fuller's. In America, the name has been co-opted to describe a malty, bitter, reddish, standard strength for the U.S., English-type ale. Hopping can be English or a combo of English and American. All right, there's a little bit of history. Let's get rid of that. Uh, Blake TV, what's up, Blake? All right, cheers, man. I'm going to have an American ESB, my pale ale homebrew. Nice, dude. Nice, nice, nice. Hell yeah. Love you guys, brothers, brothers, sisters. All right, so um, let's get into a little characteristic. Um, I can kind of give you like a quick look-see. Let's go through this first, though. Let's see, characteristics first. So we got the vital statistics. We got the stats. Um, this is also from BJCP, and I also uh, downloaded a um, chart for the bitterness unit, gravity unit ratio to see what this was. So that is also – well, I don't have that link on my – Thing, but the links are in my description. Vital statistics of a strong bitter or an English bitter, an English pale ale. 30 to 50 IBUs, 6 to 18 on the color, which is golden to deep copper. The original gravity should be anywhere from one or 1048 to 1060. The final gravity should be anywhere from 1010 to 1016, depending on all where you're wanting to get at with the percentage. 4.6 to 6.2 percent. So quite a little range there. Kind of nice. Uh, BUGU ratio would be 0.74 right in between 0.6 and 0.9, which is also tolerable. So just to keep it safe, go center. Um, some commercial versions would be uh, Fuller's ESB, Adnam's Broadside, Shepherd's Neem, uh, Shepherd Neem Bishop's Finger, Young's Ramrod, Samuel Smith's Old Brewery Pale, and uh, Whippered Pale Ale, Alaskan ESB, Boont ESB, and Red Hook ESB. So here's a little look-see at all that. 
You can kind of see the bottles that I was talking about. Um, serving temps would be 55 degrees at 13 degrees Celsius. And uh, so we're going to go, we're going to stand right in the middle there at 0.74 with the BUGU. And uh, I'm actually at about a 5.6, I think. So we're right in the middle all the way through. So um, a very easy uh, build. It's a, it's a, a single infusion match. Like a, or a, let me get this right. Basically, you're just mashing in, you're mashing out, and you're boiling. And then you're going at uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, on the – let me see. Hold on. Let me get this all right. So let me get back to me. Um, get back to the characteristics. So, uh, okay. <laughs> I got a little confused there. Sorry. Let's just keep going. Aroma. Aroma moderately high to moderately low. Medium to medium high. Malt aroma often with a low to moderately strong caramel component. Caramel's a big one in this. Although this character will be more subtle in paler versions, um, medium to low, medium to high, fruity esters, generally no diacetyl, although very low levels are allowed, the butteriness and this, that. May have light secondary notes of sulfur and or alcohol in some examples, optional. Uh, appearance, golden to deep copper, good to brilliant clarity, low to moderate white to off-white head, Low head is acceptable when carbonation is also low. I don't know if that made sense. Does that make sense? All right, let's get back to you guys. Let's see what you guys are saying. All right. <laughs> hey, all right. Jeremy, what's up, man? Good to see you, man. Uh, Boomin says, uh, Broadsides and Sam Smith's my favorite out of nice. I want to try that Broadside. I wish I could. I wonder if it's around me, my area. Uh, Sam Smith definitely rocks. I do like them. Cheers, trash. I mean, trash, trash. <laughs> Red Hook. That's actually what I have today, and that is good. That's a very good beer. Sam Smith's pubs are very cheap. Cheapest pubs in England. Nice. That's good to know. Vanessa, hello there. Cheers. Thank you guys so much for your support, for being here, man. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, some flavors. Hot flavor, moderate to moderately high. Any variety, although earthy, resiny, and or floral UK hops are more traditional. Um, you just want to stay within your bitterness uh, range. You want that balance to be right within the, uh, like I had brought up earlier, the BUG uh, ratio of bitterness. You want to keep that balance right, um, as with most beers. But, uh, okay, so um, hot bitterness and flavor should not be noticeable, should be noticeable but should not totally dominate malt flavors. Uh, may have low levels of secondary malt flavors, nutty, biscuity, which will add complexity, moderately low to high fruity esters, uh, also in the flavors as, as in the nose. Optionally may have low amounts of alcohol, same with the, uh, the, the nose as well. Medium dry to dry finish, particularly in sulfate water, if sulfate water is used. And that's another thing with these, you, uh, if you have soft water, you're gonna wanna uh, add some gypsum to that and I believe it's a teaspoon per five-gallon batch or something roughly, and you add it to your mash. Uh, generally, no di diacetyl, although very low levels are allowed, like the aroma. Uh, mouthfeel, medium light to medium full body, low to moderate carbonation, although bottled commercial versions will be higher. Stronger versions may have a slight alcohol warmth, but this character should not be too high. Uh, the overall impression, an average strength to moderately strong English ale, the balance may be fairly even between malt and hops to somewhat bitter. Drinkability is a critical component of this style. Emphasis is on bittering hop addition as opposed to the aggressive middle and late hopping seen in American ales. A broad style that allows for considerable interpretation by the brewer. Now, your general ingredients are going to be, as far as malts go, you're going to want your two-row. Uh, for an English, I would stick with Maris Otter. Uh, you can add amber and or crystal malts. I may use a touch of black uh, malts, even some chocolates, which I actually added for color in mine. May use a very small pinch, though. Very small pinch. You don't want that flavor to overpower. May use sugar adjuncts, corn or wheat, but I, it's going to make a thinner beer. Uh, I, I believe it will also make it very dry. Um, English hops are most typical, although American and European varieties are becoming more common. So I think we're going with uh, we're going to go with Fuggles as one of them. I forgot the other one that I had there. 
characterful English yeast uh, is is suggested, and I'm using the ESB uh, Burton yeast by Y yeast. Um, the water is uh, Burton versions of this beer use medium to high sulfate water. Um, so they're a little, and that actually brings out the, like the gypsum brings out the crispiness, the the bittering of the hops. It brings out a lot of uh, things that, that you would probably look for in a certain style of the, or a certain way of brewing this ESB, um, if that's what you want. Um, they do have a range though. It is it's quite a nice little range they have um, before they're not called an ESB anymore. So I am going to have, I'm going to have two beers. So we're in 10 minutes, so that's good. We'll do one beer. I'm going to do the Red Hook one, and then I'll do another one that I found this morning. Uh, let me get back to you guys. I'll start with Blake. Cheers, Boomins Beer Reviews. Cheers, Boomins. Uh, cheers, Blake. Vanessa Bumpy. Uh, Booma says, cheers, Blake. Uh, Booma says, cheers, all. <laughs> uh, Vanessa, hi, Blake. Um, Vanessa, hi, Jeremy. Um, Ronald's in the house. Ronald Sutton, what's up, man? Here's to Bowser, <laughs> Beard, Jeremy V. I'm bringing it to Wildcard Wednesday. Nice. Jeremy V just played an awesome Van Morrison song the other day. I believe it was the other day, uh, but I saw it today and it was just amazing. Check him out. Um, very awesome, talented musician. Uh, Thrash Middle is also a very talented guitarist. Do you have a date with your uh, when, when your brewery will have? It's christening beer man. I okay. So this is the deal. They called me yesterday, and they were all like, "It was cool." Like he's all get your plumbing, get your technical permit. And then the other lady called and said, "Well, you you brought to the attention that you're taking out a window and you're putting in a door and you're putting in walls and drywall and insulation." And I'm like, "Yeah," but he didn't tell me about that. So now I'm waiting on them to call me again. So it's a big waiting game. I'm assuming that whenever, well, I know whenever I get the permit, I'll be able to start building. It should be done within, <laughs> I don't even want to give a date, but within the next two months, I, I, I imagine, I've been saying that, but it's all about waiting. It's all about permits. It's all about doing it right. So, um, and I do want this to be right. So I put a lot of time and thought process into this over the past 12 years of of, 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 wow, how long have I been brewing? Ever since I started brewing, I wanted to build a really nice brewery. But recently, six, seven months of years of, uh, of straight up like planning. So very, I'm looking forward to this. A lot of uh, saving. I've been doing a lot of saving of money, you know, getting things one at a time. I can't get it all at once, you know. So two months, I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. Within the year, let's say. I'll stop there. All right. Ronald, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, cheers, Vanessa. What is a beer man? A beer man is a beer that you drink, man. <laughs> cheers to beer man. Cheers. <laughs> what up, uh, man? What's up, dude? What's up, Alex? Love you, brother. <laughs> my usual ESB, uh, five gallons, 92% UK. Uh, my, oh, what's MO? 5% crystal 15, 3% crystal 120, uh, two ounces of EKG, uh, 60 minutes, uh, hop wise, uh, one ounce of, uh, at the zero minutes, um, crystal three, three, hold on. Yeah. So yeah, you don't want, you want, yeah, you want that bitter to come out the most in the 60, but then like even like a 10 or a 10 or less, um, probably don't want to whirlpool or do anything in the secondary. You can, but I would, uh, Minimize what you're putting in in your boil, in in your uh, in your flame out or close to flame out uh, addition. That's what I think anyway. Why 1968 is what I'm using. 152. I'm going 152 as well. Yep. Um, 68 degrees. Yep. Simple but pl classic style. Very perfect, dude. Hell yeah. Thanks for that. I appreciate it, Paul. Uh, thanks. That's it. Sounds like a good recipe. Thanks for the kind words, beer man. You rock, man. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Anytime, dude. Anytime, anytime, brother. Hell yeah, Miss Piggy, right on, man. <laughs> um, or heck yeah, sorry. I'll, <laughs> I'll be more polite to the ladies. <laughs> Cheers, Ronald, son, Alex, beer master, Miss Piggy, right on. All right, hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, so let's do a beer. I'm going to go with the uh, Red Hook ESB. 
Let's go with my poor cam. Okay, <laughs> let's get down here. So that's that. Been around for quite a while. Very good beer, in my uh, opinion. I've been drinking on these all week. Had to buy a six pack. Uh, this is actually packaged on uh, June nine twenty. So not super old. July, August, two months, two and a half months, three months, three months old or so. All right, cool. They're out of uh, Seattle, Washington. They might even have some other breweries that they use for distribution, this, that. I don't know. I didn't show you the poor cam. It's a poor cam. And I didn't even show you the poor. It's all the way up here. Okay, uh, so you can see a uh, nice copper color. Nice finger head. <laughs> nice finger head. Let's go back to me. This is confusing me. Um, yeah, nice finger head. Let's go for the nose. It's got a nice, uh, like a floral kind of, I don't know, like a sweet floral malty caramel bite to it. It's real nice in the nose. That's a quick uh, quick nose there. It's pretty much it. Sums it up. Um, does have kind of a biscuit edge to it, actually. Lacing's already starting up. Um, head's retention is not terrible. It's down to a finger, half finger in about a minute or so. It's got a fast rising bubble, uh, pretty kind of, kind of effervescent to some degree, but not super kind of in the, um, mediocre range. It's fast though. It's a fast rising bubble. Uh, it is a clear beer. It does have a slight dullness to it, but it's clear, uh, copper color. Let's drink it. Cheers. See the lacing as I drop that down. Yeah, it's got this one has kind of a dry, chalky kind of finish. Um, they might have even added some extra sugars in this. I don't know. Um, corn or uh, uh, cane sugar or something like that. I don't know. It's a little dry and um, dry in the back, like uh, chalky dry. It does have a caramel. Like a, it's very light. It's a light body. It's, it's a light, medium, medium, light body. Um, more on the light side, though. It's crisp, clean, uh, very nice to drink, very easy to drink, very refreshing. Caramels really pop through this. Floral really comes out the hops up in the back, kind of by the back uh, back of the throat there. You get, you get that dry kind of floral hoppiness. Not spicy, really. Good. Very good beer. Um, out of five, I'd probably give this around, ooh, I'll give it about a four. We'll go ah, three, we'll go three, seven, five. We'll go three, seven, five on that. Not too bad. So yeah, man. Cool. Hey, what's up, Sparkles? All right, man. <laughs> good to see you too, Moose. Hey, Grower, good to see you, man. Hell yeah. Thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. What's up, Brian? Most headed growers is funny. Those guys are funny, man. I, I gotta hit. I gotta hit up one of your lives, dude. No, you guys are great, man. You guys are great. Um, all right, Thrash Vanessa Kitty. Uh, we got. They have a secondary brewery in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. All right, is it Portsmouth or Portsmouth? <clears throat> Sparkles, hi, beer man. Hello, how you doing, Michelle? Um. Okay, okay, okay. Cheers, Sparkles. Cheers, most headed grower. Hell yeah. Oh yeah! All right, so it's that time. Let's do a uh, let's do a recipe. So what I've done is uh, <clears throat> let's get my recipe notes real quick. Kind of go through them real quick. In Beersmith, I had to use the I use the strong bitter as the base as it. It's what it is. Um, strong bitters tend to have a slightly fuller malt backbone than special best bitters, and the appropriate bitterness to balance the additional malt. Like Paul said, a very simple. Uh, grain bill, a very simple uh, hop uh, schedule, a very um, just very simple beer to make, but very perfect. You know, like it's a it's a good beer to drink. It's thirst quenching. Like I just had this is a very good beer. I'm hot as hell right now, and it's really like cooling me down. So, <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> yes, beer man. <laughs> I said it right, Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just clicked my Mozilla browser hold on that thing takes forever to load and i didn't want to open it so um so what i'm gonna do is i'm using maris i'm gonna i'm not gonna over, go over the amount that i'm doing just yet because we'll build the recipe
but I'm going to use Maris Otter, a British Pale Malt. We're going to use uh, Crystal. Uh, we're going to use a couple different Crystal uh, Caramel Malts. One a lighter one and one a darker one, but a very small pinch of the darker one. I don't want to add too much. Uh, I don't really want to get too much raisin like or anything like that. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I added any special roast, but you can. You can add special roast, victory biscuit, or aromatic malt if you choose. Um, also, in very small, you want to add those in small proportions. I got beard hair stuck between my finger. Um, so a note to that: these are the, uh, these are some specialty malts that can be used in your bill. We, we I just told you that. Um, that's a note to me, I guess. Chocolate or black malt in very small proportions can be used for color and think balance and flavor. Uh, Flacco, what's up, man? Ah, oh, it's good to see you, dude. Good to have you here, man. Thanks. All right, man. Um, so let's just go through my notes. Use an ounce or two at most of highly kiln malts per five gallon batch. You don't want to add too much. All for flavor. All for uh, look. All for color. Uh, adjuncts such as corn and sugar really should be used only when trying to increase work fermentability for bigger beers. <laughs> bigger beers. Ooh. Uh, as far as hops go, a 60-minute bittering addition, large late hop addition near flame out, preferred probably 10, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, even five, maybe even one, maybe at flame out, two minutes maybe if you want. Preferred by this author brewer that I was reading this from, which this actually came from BYO.com. It's just a, another author that, that has brewed these beers and is talking about it. So if you do dry hop this, make sure you reduce the late hop additions, like I said earlier, to keep the, the hop flavor and aroma under control. Um, you can use Kent Goldings, Fuggles, Target, North Down, and Challenger. In this one, we're using North Down and Fuggles. Fuggles as a late addition. Uh, I believe it's 10 minutes. It is true that water with high sulfate content enhances the sharp, bitter aspect of hops, but you can overdo it easily. Give it a chalk. It can easily give it a chalky, metallic, or harsh character. This kind of had a chalkiness to it. Any water is any water is usable unless it is on the soft end of the spectrum. Um, you may you can add gypsum or Burton salts to harden that up a bit. And um, that will uh, that will bring out your 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 bitterness and, and your flavors more and stuff like that. So uh, fermentation, as far as the yeast goes, fermentation creates much of the flavor and aroma in most British beers. English strains provide a variety of interesting esters and tend to be low, moderately attenuative, leaving some residual sweetness to balance the bitterness and help fill out the beer. Flocculent strains are ideal for cask conditioning. They provide a fairly low lev level of esters at cool fermentation temp temperatures, uh, six, less than 65 degrees or 18 Celsius, and abundant fruity esters and alcohol notes at high temps, greater than 70 and 21 Celsius. So start in the middle of this range and let temps rise sl slowly over a couple days, creating expected levels of esters and keep and key, it also keeps the amount of diacetyl in the finished beer at a minimum. These are highly modified grains, though, so there's not a whole lot of worry as far as diacetyl, diacetyl um, but it doesn't sound like a bad idea to, to maybe raise the temps a little and, uh, I don't know, work with it. Do your thing. It's a, it's a good uh, creative one. You can kind of get into your own realm with this one. Uh, so it should be fun to brew. I can't wait. Hmm. Cheers, brother. Tuning in, uh, tuning in on the drive home. Nice, man. Right on. Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. Tra what? Thrash metal. What's on the menu? <laughs> All right. So um, let's build this recipe. Um, I'm going to open this up right now. And we're going to do this. Hold on. I'm just bringing up uh, Beer Smith. I didn't bring it up. I forgot. I have the recipe, so we'll just kind of skim through it, and then we'll review one more beer, and uh, we'll talk, and this, that, and whatever. So um, let me get this all shared out. We're going to go big screen, share the screen, and here we go. All right, so let me bring up my recipe. No, okay. Why, oh, I forgot to say White Labs, WLP002 English Ale, or Y East. 1968 London ESB Ale, which is what I'm using, are two of this guy's favorites to use. You can also use SO4, though, if you prefer dry yeast. Um, 
You can experiment with this, though. You can use other English strains to experiment. All right, let's do this. You see my notes there. Okay. Um, so uh, here we go. It's beer time, and this is a ESB. And beer man, <laughs> that's me. I go to Kegel. 10 gallons, 72% efficiency. I'm going to leave it at the default. 60-minute boil time, 60-minute mash, 60-minute um, sparge, all the way through. Boom, 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 boom. Um, let's say let's change this to uh, what is uh, strong bitter? Uh, let's use this. Okay. And... Just kind of throw single infusion, two stay or uh, two stage fermentation. Um, so we want to get to seventy four on the bitterness ratio. If you can see my cursor there, so we're gonna go ahead and let's get this. Uh, let's get this going. Let's pump it out. Um, this okay recipe I put together: eighteen pounds of Maris Otter. Okay, and two pounds of caramel crystal 40. And which is, uh, okay. We have four ounces of caramel crystal 80. Point two four. Wait, no, I didn't want that. I wait up. What's? Oh, I meant uh, two five. Two five. Sorry, I'm not a good math mathematician. Uh, twelve ounces of biscuit malt. I, if I had, I wish I had music in the background so you weren't so bored. <laughs> <laughs> Biscuit malt. We're gonna add biscuit, which is a Belgian malt. We're gonna add um, what did I say? Twelve ounces, so three quarters of a pound. We're gonna add one or two ounces of chocolate malt. I'm gonna add the German chocolate malt. Wait, no, there was, there's no German chocolate malt. Let's just add the, uh, yeah, there's uh, the, we'll just use that. Not the German, I meant the UK. Sorry. We'll add the chocolate malt, we'll add that. Um, oh, how do I do that? The 0.12 or something? We'll leave it there. 1.9 ounces is fine with me. Uh, 2.5 ounces of North Down. Never used North Down before, but it looked like it had a nice, bittering uh alpha and it's north down um 8.5 alphas 60 minutes two and a half ounces 2.5 60 minutes pellet All right then we'll go um then we're gonna add fuggles united kingdom 4.5 percent and we're going to add that at uh, one ounce, 4.5 at 10 minutes. One ounce at 10 minutes of Fuggles. Okay. Miscellaneous stuff, miscellaneous magnets. Um, <laughs> we're going to add uh, gypsum. <laughs> well, I'm not going to add gypsum, actually. I want to test the water. So I'm not going to do that yet, but I will add um, my findings, uh, Irish moss. We'll add a teaspoon of that to uh, 10 minutes of boil. And my, uh, my yeast, I'm going to add the uh, London ESB, two packages. I could do a starter and do a London ESB that, or do one package. Let's do... London, um, what's the number of that? 1968, it's this one, okay. 
the ESPA. Oh yeah. So we'll we'll just do uh, we'll do two though, and I may I may do a starter. I'll probably do a starter, but we'll just do two for now. Um, but that's it. You can see the the point seven four. If you follow my point or uh, arrow, there is point seven four six. So it's really perfect in the balance. The number the arrows look perfect. Colors twelve point six. Um, we got a one point oh five seven, which I'll change over here and makes it a um makes the efficiency. Well, what? Oh. I forgot to change that to 10. 72.1 efficiency, and it's all based on your system as well. Uh, 42.5 IBUs and a 5.3% ESB, which is actually sounds good to me. So let's uh, get out of here. Hi, how's it going? I will test my water, though. I want to make sure it's not – it doesn't – Tastes hard or soft. It's probably like in the medium. So, <laughs> I am really looking forward to you trying your beers that you're going to make in the future. Looking forward to it, my friend. Me too, man. Me too, dude. Me too. Don't know yet. I will. It will be a couple weeks before I will start getting a recipe together. Nice. Uh, I found a special spice to smoke to smoke with smoke with. Very nice. It's not oregano. <laughs> Is it pot? Uh, and <laughs> all right. <laughs> What's up, meow? What's up, Arcade? All right. So uh, yeah, let's do another beer. I'm gonna I'm gonna chill here with you guys a little bit. But that's it. That's uh, very simple. And you could actually just use Marisotter in that, and that's it if you want. As long as you're within your SRM, your color range. Um, but it's always not a bad idea to add a little caramel to that. Uh, I would even imagine, because Maris Otter gives you kind of a biscuit-like flavor, so you don't really have to add biscuit, but I added it to accentuate it a little more, so I, I figured that would be okay. I don't know. Yeah, so didn't ever show this. There we go. That's the recipe that I just did right now. I actually added one package of London ESB. Uh, it says to mash in at 152 for 60 minutes. Proceed with 60-minute boil. Uh, well, you want to sparge for 60 as well. 60-minute uh, boil and ferment for two weeks at 68 degrees. And if you wanted to, you can bring the you can start at, at a medium level and bring it up the last three days to 68, um, just to kind of get the diacetyl uh, and everything kind of balanced out. So, yeah. yeah, I'm probably talking too fast. That's kind of why I have a recipe put up there, which I'll do for now on, because it does kind of come out quick. And you can pause it and write it down if you want to try it yourself. <laughs> I hope so. It was balanced. <laughs> and with and I was using the same grains that I had read, read about, so I imagine it should be all right. But, yeah. Now we're going to try another beer. It's one I found uh, by Ferment Project out of Portland, Oregon. It's in one of the recycling bottles or recycled bottles. You can, uh, oh no, this isn't one of those. It actually has the paint. Some of them have these, uh, you can return them and they'll reuse them, this, that. But um, Ferment Brewing Company, it's an English style pale uh, ESB. They are, uh, it's wild crafted in Hood River, Oregon which is east of us directly, actually. And it's over by uh, Mount Hood. It's a big active volcano. It actually kind of almost, we thought it was going to explode like six, seven months, years ago. But it, never, it just had a little burp. Um, this is a 5.4. This is actually very close to what I just did. Um, let me see this real quick. So, oh, wait, I don't I have the wrong, wrong thing up. Not what I just did. Well, yeah, what I just did. But it's definitely within the uh, the statistics, though. Uh, 5.4. for It's right in the middle. 45 IBUs. Right in the middle. It's a middle. And what I built was a middle one. So that's perfect. All right. So let's go to the cam. Got my uh, – you can serve them in these. They say to serve it at 55 degrees. Um because you really get the flavors and stuff coming out of these the caramels and uh, the, the 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 hops and the bitterness and everything starts to kind of play its uh, course. 
So, but let's, uh, I really like this bottle though. It's really cool. Uh, I think it's a cool bottle. Um, yeah. Anyway, I don't see a date. They are part of the Independent Crafts Brewers Association. Um, let's open this bad boy up. It's got a more of a caramely look to it. Go over there and take that and put it over there. Okay, so this is darker, uh, darker beer. It's more of a more of a dark caramel kind of color. Um, it's got a nice, I don't know, kind of an off off whitish tan head, kind of a more of a slightly almost khaki. Not totally. Um, almost has like a red tint to it. Uh, it does have a copper look to the color. Um, got it poured about a little over a finger head. Let's go over here. Let's go to the nose. Cheers. This one's more raisin. Like they might have used special roast and like a darker caramel, obviously. Maybe a caramel uh, 80, caramel 120, something like that. Small pinches of that to kind of add that raisin, uh, caramel, uh, deep, rich caramel kind of flavor or smell. It's very hazy too. Very hazy beer. I can't really see through it at all. At the bottom, you get the light and you can see it, but it's just a lot of suspension. Um, let's go... Let's go for the drink. I can't really turn it like that. And I don't know why. I don't know why I was doing that. Just was doing it. All right, cheers. This one's more um, it's got a bitter malt balance. It's very nice there. But it's more fruity estery. It's more fruity uh, in the in the nose and in the flavor. Um, it does have a uh, it's not as dry in the back, or not as dry, but it's not as uh, chalky. Doesn't have that chalkiness. Um, this was made better, in my opinion. I think I should have probably had this one first, but it's cool. Um, the lacing's already coming around the sides there. Really nice, beautiful beer. Um, it is actually not super beautiful because it is kind of swampy looking. If you look at it, it's really hazy. But it is a. It's playing off as a pretty beer though with the lacing. Uh, the head's really pretty. Um, and they're not supposed to have a super huge head, actually, from what I was reading. Very good. Caramels, dark roast, uh, biscuit, uh, a real nice brown bread-like flavor. The caramel really comes through. A little toffee in there as well. This is richer, uh, more of a, a medium body, medium light body still, but more pushing medium. And the mouthfeel is uh, just kind of kind of creamy, subtle, uh, easy going on the mouth, really easy to drink, real nice, nice beverage here. It's more flavorful. Has more in it, packs a punch. Not as uh, not as commercial. It tastes more um, home brewed, if you want to say. Kind of more unfiltered and 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 nice. I like this. Out of five hops, I'll give this uh, four four point two five hops. It's very good. I would I would totally buy this again. I like this. Not bad. So cool. All right, man. 10, 10, 10. We got ten thousand people in the house. Thank you so very much. You are so great. That should, what should I drink next? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to drink this down with you guys. And uh, and then um, I might, Ronald Thirio has his thing, Wild Card Wednesday. I may take a break from that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely shout that out. So if you guys want to go follow through with that and go to his wild card Wednesday, it starts at 4 20 PM, right? I think <laughs> 7 20, uh, Eastern. And then I'm going to be definitely going to beer chugs, uh, at 6 PM Pacific time. And that would be nine o'clock Eastern. I definitely want to hit up those at least one of them, if anything. But he does have uh, open spots for 10 people to be on his game show. So it's a real fun time. Go on over there, guys. Um, yeah, fun stuff. What the ABV? And Wild Card Wednesday is also very fun. And I, I, there's no theme. He just said there was a wild beer. So um, I'll give myself just a sec. What is the uh, – I never get the link to that, guys. Um, I don't think I'm in that group. So I was wondering about that. 
But if you guys can put that in the back end, that would be cool because then I can uh, hop on. But, uh, yeah, yeah. When it comes, of course. This is a good beer. This is more raisiny. Mmm. Raisin, dark caramels, roast, biscuit. Even kind of a... Mmm. Like a brown sugariness. Hmm. Yeah, nice. I like it. So, what I'm going to do next week, I can shout that out. Next Wednesday, I've already come up with it, and I'm going to try and get this done earlier. But I'm going to do an Irish stout. I'm going to do a dry Irish stout. Um, I'm actually, if I find another one, I will get it, but I've already got some Guinness. Come on. But if I do find one, I haven't been able to find an Irish stout anywhere uh, that's craft made or anything. So... I, I do have a Guinness, and I'll be on the lookout. But that's what I kind of want to go through next week. Um, I've got several recipes. Holy crap. Um, the, the library is getting bigger and bigger. But there's so many. I, I was talking to myself in the car. I do that a lot. <clears throat> there's so many styles or so many sub-styles of styles. I've gotten a very big amount of styles. But now there's all these sub-styles that i got to go into, you know, and it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, does he? Oh, I'm sorry, no, Bumpy. I meant for uh, for Ron's for Ron's Wild Card Wednesday. Joe England, you having a shiny black lager? Nice, man. All right, dude. That sounds good, actually. I really like black IPAs. I've never. I don't believe I. I don't think I've had a black lager before. My dog's doing some loud licking. <clears throat> yeah, I'll look out for that, Bumpy. Thanks. <clears throat> I always do forget to look at my emails on that, so. <clears> oh, <throat> yeah. So as soon as I get done with this. <laughs> I don't have anything else, uh, exciting more to talk about, really, but. Except to uh, drink a beer with you guys and uh, finish this sesh off. Because this was fun, man. I can't wait to brew this beer, actually. I'm looking forward to it. No, uh, back to uh, no back to the brewery, though, man. Uh, that was brought up by Brian. Um, yeah. International Beer Guild and Beer Talk 2020 Hangouts. <laughs> oh. Dog needs Bowser beer. <laughs> no, that will, uh, it, I've got everything is stuffed in my living room, ready to be put into place, right? Mm. It's all there. It's all in there. It's all stuffing up our whole living room, and I can't walk around anything. Waiting to go in there. So as soon as that happens, it'll be good to be on. Quite a system though, a three three barrel, a three barrel, a three 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 barrel, a three three tiered system. Um, you've seen pictures and videos of me showing those off. Um, it's a kegel system, fifteen gallons, do ten gallons at a time. I just ordered two more corny kegs, so I have nine corny kegs, and I'm actually going to. Um, I bought some lids that have already pre-drilled holes with airlocks, so I'll be using those for secondary tanks. And switching them out if I if I have to use them for that. Um, but I also my fermentation tanks are these thirteen and a half gallon stainless conicals on legs. I just put caster wheels on them. I put all new parts because they were fucked up, dudes. They were fucked up. I got them, and you guys are going. Oh, why didn't you just turn them in? Turn them in. Return them. No, they were cool looking, but they were fucked up. They were fucked up. I had to buy wheels for them. I had to buy a whole new uh, dip tube inside that actually turns, and I'm going to have to get a little tube, uh, some uh, half-inch tubing to kind of go in to get deeper into the thing because it doesn't have a bottom drain out. It's just a bucket fermenter, but it's stainless. It's got the clips. The clips were bent all out of shit, so I had to go buy a ratchet gun and ratchet more uh, things inside to make them all work. I was pissed. I told the uh, people I bought them from, oh, you want to know what I've, I've raised hell. But 
they were uh i don't i'm not gonna get into price they, they weren't expensive but they they were they were up there so i got three of those i got um you know i've got my mat to lay down and walk on i've got my tables in there in my sink and uh, i've got like i'm gonna build a walk-in fridge uh, I've got my air conditioner that I use as my coffee table, um, <laughs> and I <laughs> I have my range hood that's on my couch, and I've got my floor drain that's by my range hood, and then I've got all oh, my taps, and I got eight inch um, things to go through the the the. It's like an eight. It's going to be a seven and a half inch wall because it'll have uh, two uh, four inch thick th insulation plus batting inside the framing. So it's just going to be crazy. Um, the taps are going to be off the wall, so I'll have five taps. One of them's going to have uh, a tap that will have different pressure for, like, loggers and stuff, and then four of them will be regular ale pressure. Um, not that that really is needed, but I figured I would have these, these things available so that I can do them if I need to. Um, a firm tank, one of those three will be inside the walk-in fridge so I can do loggers and stuff like that. So shanks shanks got eight inch shanks eight and a quarter inch shanks actually so that should work just perfect um just uh, it's it's gonna be fun man i got three co2 20 pound tanks uh one for reserve one for the extra um pressured one and one for the four and then i got a 10 pound tank to keep filled for my filling gun when i do bottles and shit and cans so Hey, Beer Hounds, what's up, man? I'm from Orange County. That's near my hometown, man. I'm from Whittier. I'm from Whittier. Hell yeah. Don't shank me, bro. No, no. <laughs> sounds more off, off the wall. Sounds more like the hook. Beer, beer man, have you ever made a peanut butter stout? I have not, and... I will definitely consider that. I don't like peanut butter and beer, but in a stout that I, I don't know. Ah, uh, <laughs> I've had peanut butter in, in stouts and porters actually. And I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled with them. If you can balance it out though and make that peanut butter, not so, ah, uh, then I would be all right with it. That nuttiness for some reason in peanut really doesn't taste good. It's off putting to me. Out. Come on, doggy. So I don't know. I'd have to find a really good peanut butter specialty stout or something, you know, something that tastes really good. Um, but no, nice one. Uh, Belching Beaver makes a, a – I think it's a, actually a peanut butter porter. Come on, buddy. You're going to mess up my wires and it's going to go. <laughs> my dog, man. No, dude. Get over there, homie. Okay, I love you, but stay over there. <sighs> but yeah, no, uh, forgot what I was talking about. But yeah, so the uh, the brewery, it's got some things, got some things coming. Um, I've got a canner, I've got uh, got a really nice mill. I got a monster mill, like a three roller monster mill, uh, with the with the extra tower on it, so I can actually put more in there. Um, and then I bought a motor with a reducer on the speed as well as a reverse forward knot thing switch that will allow me to go backwards forwards if it gets mixed up um that'll be on a 120 volt i'm gonna build a uh i'm gonna build a um a cradle for that to sit on uh i was gonna get a crate and just put it into a black like a like a one of those black uh restaurant like crates or whatever but um i don't know i, th I think i'll have something a little more stable right next to the door or right next to the, the table. Um, Got to put in a new door in there and also in the walk-in fridge. Uh, also new ceiling and drywall and decoration, of course. I got this big mold that um, I'm going to put up on, or not mold, like a, a stencil that was made three foot by three foot that I'll have this right here burned into the wall <laughs> or actually colored in probably, stained in or something. But uh, well, it's going to look nice. It, it, it'll, it'll look good. A lot of thought, a lot of, a lot of thought process gone into this. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, at 49 minutes, a lot of me talking and bullshitting, but, uh, there's still some more left. 
Yeah, I might I might head over there. We'll I'll, I'll see. Uh, I got a good half hour to kind of chill and relax before I go over to Ron's thing. So that'd be fun. Oh yeah. I picked up some new beers today. I think some good ones. I was trying to get more uh, into. Wanted to get a porter. I'm tired of doing only IPAs. They are my favorites. <laughs> I like Dippas, I like Nipas, I like IPA, American West Coast IPAs. I uh, like the all IPAs given to me, but uh, I do like to switch it out. So I'll be uh, throwing up a, a porter here, a review here soon, probably tomorrow. But I do like just to shout me out for those that don't know. Um, all of you have been following me though, so you do know, I'm sure. But I do do uh, got a lot of burps here. Multi Mondays, I will. I'm gonna shout. Uh, good buddies out. Multi Monday on uh, at five o'clock p.m. Uh, eight o'clock Eastern. Please go there and uh, check it out. I don't know if uh, Bumpy can answer that. I don't know if he's still here or not. But um, um, if he, he I know he's he's going to be gone for a little bit, so I don't know if he'll be there. But the show must go on, as he has said, and everyone else uh, is willing to help him out with that. So uh, that may might change this week only. We'll see. Uh, rather hear it from Bumpy. Uh, but follow me there. I'll, I always try to make that. And uh, Tuesday, is, of course, beer and cheese. Uh, and uh, do that at 5 o'clock, same time, 8 o'clock Eastern. And this I also I do at 3 o'clock. I changed it, uh, 6 o'clock Eastern, uh, so that I can follow other uh, good people uh, like Ron and like Beer Chugs and have a little time with my wife uh, in between. So um, I love to support you guys. Uh, just uh, and I think this is great. I think it's a great uh, community. And uh, there's also other great food communities and uh, scratcher communities and and other cool people that are just so uh, they're they're all so y'all are so cool uh, good to me and good to everyone and uh, uh, appreciate appreciate your support. So um, I'll go ahead and cut this out. We're at 51, 52, 52 minutes. So I uh, appreciate it, everyone. Appreciate it so much. Uh, recently, Lucia D shouted out my channel, so I appreciate that or uh, shared my channel in her community. So I appreciate that, Lucia. Uh, I try. I try to get to your stuff as much as I, I try. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard to get the things. But um. But but uh. Yeah. No. Sincerely. Uh. From the bottom of my fucking heart. Uh. I love you guys. And uh, you guys have a good night. Cheers. Night day. Wherever you're from in this world. And I'll go ahead and end it with a little outro. <laughs>